We're Malin and Johan, a Swedish couple that have been sailing full time since 2016. After three and a half years of sailing, we welcomed our daughter Vera on board. Most recently, we bought a farm in Sweden, where we are going to build our dream boat ourselves from scratch. Welcome aboard and please subscribe for weekly episodes. Last week we took a break from boat building and took the night train up to the Swedish mountains. Almost my whole family came along. My dad and his partner, my brothers and even my grandparents, but they went on a different train. All seven of us slept in one compartment, which has six beds. And when we woke up in the morning, we had arrived in the mountains. Our destination was Duved, which lies 1,100 kilometers from our home in Skåne. We had five days of skiing ahead of us, and our main goal was to teach Vera how to ski. I'm so excited. I think it's been over 10 years since I was here last time. It's a beautiful day. Now we're just gonna pick up our rental skis and everything, our ski passes and then out in the slopes. Vera started the ski school the next day and during one and a half hour, you and I could ski together. Going up the little lift here and Vera is so good. She's doing so well. Going all by herself. We worked on plowing or to make the pizza as some call it. In the ski school they call it the ice cream cone. A few days were really cold, below 19 celsius in the morning, and wind on top of that. On our last day we had amazing weather again, and we didn't feel like going home. Five days flew by so quickly, and it was already time to head back to the farm. We had so much fun, and all the fresh air and skiing made Vera very sleepy.
So we're back here at the farm down in the south of Sweden. The weather is not like the weather we had up in the mountains. It's pouring down the rain. It's two to three Celsius and it's windy. So a pretty common day, common winter day down here in the south. Um, but that doesn't matter because we're in here and it's time to continue with the connection pieces on the front part of the boat. The same thing I did the week before we went skiing in the stern of the boat. And it's also time to do the rest of these uh, support legs up in the front of the hull. And we're also going to give you an update on some uh, features in the boat design uh, that we did. But more about that later. There were 10 frames left to put supports on. So it's been another pretty long day here in the barn. It's almost 11 o'clock now in the evening, uh, but finally the mold is finished. All the extra legs are in place, all the spacer pieces are in there, and now it's time to start uh, pr producing the first permanent pieces of the actual boat. The stem in the front, and after that it's time to start planking the hull. But first, before we can do that, we need to ripsaw all the timber, all the cedar, to the correct dimensions. And that's a lot of work too, because there's about three kilometers of strips that we need to saw first. So that will also take uh, quite some time to do that. So, feels great, but now it's really time to hit the bed. As we mentioned in our last episode, we thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about how much the strong back and all the temporary frames have cost us so yeah. far. And that is also how, f how much money we've spent so far in the boat build, if we don't count in... Yeah, excluding the tools and Yeah, the and preparing machines. the barn and yeah. everything. So more or less what goes into the actual boat build, the mold. And... Uh, it's, we're still on budget, and uh, that much is clear, but we have spent a little bit more than we thought on this. Um, the main reason, I think, is that plywood has gotten quite expensive nowadays. Um, plywood for this is around $1,000. Uh, I think we bought 22 sheets, and that's just mm. for, the, for the frames, the temporary frames. And then on top of that, we have some plywood sheets for the table that we use to... Um, produce all these temporary frames on, on top of. Um, yeah, when we use the shaper machine to yeah. cut out the frames. And the next thing that got a little bit more expensive than we first thought was the strong back. In total, the whole strong back with the timber, all the hardware, these threaded rods, the nuts and bolts and everything, um, costed us around $900. Yeah, and then we have all the timber, the spacers, these legs. There's quite many meters of this stuff in this mall. I think it's around 350 meters or something, pretty close to that. What type of timber is this? 
Uh, it's just um, Swedish fir, uh, okay. sheep, construction timber, or lumber, maybe you call it that. It yeah, depends yeah, yeah. if you're American English or from the UK, I guess. Uh, but that has costed us around four, roughly $430. So not a lot considering how many meters we have in here, but um, still some money, it adds up. So you can say that this type of uh, lumber or timber is still at an okay price. Yeah, we got it fairly here. cheap. Uh, we paid 13 kroners, Swedish kroners per meter. So that's roughly nowadays a dollar a meter. So the cost for all the smaller things, I mean, there's a lot of screws, different angle irons, uh, glue, um, nails, and uh, those pla green screws. plastic things. Yeah, these wedges in plastic. Uh, all of that, together with the shaper tape for the, the router that we used, yeah. uh, that adds up to, let me see, $420. So quite a lot actually, uh, just for the glue and screws really. Um, I think that's an area where we could have saved uh, quite a lot of money uh, as well, because um, uh, I have noticed now that there's a big difference in which type of screw you buy. You can save a lot of money on that. Um, one pack of screw can go from $10 up to $40 for the same amount, really, just depending on what type of screw it is. Yeah, we talked about this before. In a big build like this, you really have to think about the cost of smaller things, because since the boat is so big, every little thing really adds up in costs mm -hmm. over time if you don't see those small uh, things during the mm -hmm. way. And I think a way of doing that is to take your time to then do your research and yeah, look find, around, look find around. A good price. And I, I think sometimes we've not been in a rush, but we wanted to do it quickly yeah. to move on to the next step or the next part of um, yeah. the process. So we've gone to maybe the closest uh, hardware store yeah. where it's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, it, it's, it, it makes sense to plan your purchases mm. for sure which also means that you always have to be a little bit ahead mm. in the process yeah, definitely. to see, okay, in this next step now, what are the most expensive stuff that we are going to use? Start looking for on the secondhand market online, for example, right away, yeah. or try to research where you can find the cheapest parts and tools that we're gonna need. Yeah. And last, we have the cost for the table uh, that we built to use uh, for the shaper origin, the router, to produce the temporary frames on. And the cost for that was around $350. So quite expensive considering we tore it down and couldn't use that much uh, mm. of it later on. So all in all, we paid for the whole mold, all the materials that had gone into this, just over three thousand dollars so still okay but it is a lot of money considering that we're going to rip all this down once the hull is built of course we will try to yeah. reuse what we can uh, take it apart um, carefully yeah and we've been getting this question a lot can't you reuse this and yes of course we can or sell or sell it to someone else yeah but the, the problem could be uh, when it's time to take it out of the hull, once it's mm -hmm. turned around, uh, there will probably be some of these that will be broken once we get them out. Or maybe bent. Yeah, or... but in theory, definitely possible to build a second boat on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so if somebody's interested, uh, send us an email. But despite that the mold cost $3,000, I still think it's a very cost-efficient way to build a one-off boat. If you compare it to, let's say, building a fiberglass boat, a one-off, uh, then you also need a mold, but it will be a female mold, and the quality of that mold needs to be a lot better than this. Uh, so that mold would have been even more expensive. So it is what it is. Building a one-off boat, that single boat needs to carry a lot of costs, especially mm. initial costs like tools and the mold like this. Uh, but that's just how it is. 
We also wanted to talk about some of the design changes that we've done in RON3's uh, layout. So this is what she looks like uh, right now. The, I mean, the hull color is still temporarily. We, I don't think we're gonna have that color. We're looking down in the galley, and here we have moved the galley aft backwards in the boat. And we've also switched sides on the big head completely from uh, starboard side to port side. Yes. And why did we do this? Um. Mainly because we wanted to have a bigger uh, shower with mm. uh, better headroom in there. Uh, but also that it, the way the galley was a bit in front before wasn't ideal with the, the movement of the boat, but also ventilation. So now it's more in the center of the boat where the ventilation is better, but the movement of the boat will also be less back there. By doing this and changing side on the, on the head in the shower, we also managed to get more space for that. Mm -hmm. And as an added bonus, the, how do you say it? The corridor from- Hallway. Yeah, the hallway from the deck salon going forward is in one line now, mm -hmm. um, which we think is better. Mm -hmm. We have two main spaces in the galley one on each side. Uh, we have the one in more the center of the boat. We will have the sink and, and, the, stove. and the stove. And then behind us, we will have, uh, I think, storage, maybe yeah. the fridge, freezer, yeah. and then maybe also something on the on hall the wall. walls yeah. as well. The design and layout is still an ongoing process that we're working with our naval architect, Ulf, a parallel between all of the rest that we're doing on the boat build. Yeah. Um, but I mean, these design features are not that important yet to have you know, a final decision on. So what Ulf is mainly working on now are more the structural components yeah. on the boat Off or the in the boat. There's also another change that we did on the more of the looks of the boat and outside on the deck house. So let us show you that. So as you can see on the deck house in the front, we have tilted the front windows forward a little bit. So the look of the boat is a bit more work boatish now. But it's not only the look, no. it has a very practical feature yes, definitely. or function. And that is that it, it, you get less, much less glare yeah. from the sun when you have the windows tilted like forward a little bit yeah. instead of straight or even going on the other side because yeah. then you will have the glare and it's harder to see through the windows. And it also gets stronger this way. Um, if you have an onboarding wave, even if it sounds a bit strange, but even if the windows are tilted forward, that's better than having them straight like this. Um, so we think it looks really cool. Um, and yeah, so we decided to keep it like this. Yeah. We still haven't decided if we're going to keep the portholes in the hull round or oh. oval shaped or um, yeah. yeah, what type of shape we're going to have. We're still testing out what we like. I mean, it's the same thing on the outside, like Malin said, with the layout inside. It's an ongoing process the deck layout and there's still a lot of changes going around here um, where well, the hatches will be and how we will um, position all the winches and where the lines will go uh, and all of that so but i think she looks so good i think she looks so cool like yeah. a real yacht <laughs> she looks so so big i think when you see her yeah. like this but it, it is a big boat yeah, so it's a big boat yeah. Thanks for watching this episode and a big thank you to all of our patrons yes. which support our production and making it possible for us to make these videos and to share it with all of you. So if you enjoy our content, we would be really happy to have you on our Run Sailing crew and there we tried to do some live streams. It was a while ago since we did them, but we're really gonna take that up now. Yeah. We do have Starlink now, so we have good <laughs> Wi-Fi here on the farm. We didn't have that before. And on Patreon, we also stay in direct contact with all our patrons, so you can message us yeah. and we talk to each other which is the easiest way for us to be able to respond on messages and emails. And questions. Yeah. And questions, yeah. 
So we hope to see you next week and uh, have a good weekend. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.